What's up, people? It's Leah, and today we have a very, very, very exciting video. I am going to see Augusty, aka Sugar from BTS, in concert. Now, I want to have a disclaimer right at the beginning. If you are not a fan of BTS. It's okay, I still like you, though I judge you. But more importantly, that is my destination, that is my goal. I'm going to see Augustine concert, but that isn't really what this video is going to be about. It's gonna be more of a road trip video because I'm driving from Las Vegas to LA by myself to go see this concert by myself. But also really the premise of this video is going to be about the sort of existential crisis I went through when I turned 30 last July and sort of my feelings on being 30 now. And the reason I'm pairing that in with this BTS video is because Suga had a documentary come out recently and the premise of said documentary was just that, turning 30 and feeling a certain way about it because he also turned 30 this year. And it was sort of after seeing that documentary where I was like, I have to see this show. I have to, have to, have to see this concert. I discovered BTS in 2020. I had a lot of time indoors and I was looking for happiness <laughs> as I think a lot of us were. And yeah, I mean, they were a really big part of my 2020 and 2021 experience. I just feel like so much joy from them. They're literally right here in my gallery wall in my living room. I just think they're so wholesome. They're so lovely. They bring so much joy. And Suga, who is my bias, if you're a K-pop stan, you know what that means. Basically just means he's my favorite member of the group. Also has a solo career as August D. He's a hip hop artist. He's a rapper. And he sings a lot about like, especially in this last record, depression, anxiety, things that are like pretty taboo in the K-pop world. And I also think BTS as a whole is doing a lot of that, is destigmatizing a lot that is taboo in the K-pop world. And I think that their fame is important and they're using it properly. And I just love them. And I could talk about it forever. But as I said, that's really not what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about the fear I felt turning 30 and now the freedom that I feel being 30 and all the great things ahead. But more on that later. I have a long drive ahead of me today. It is about four hours to LA, but I don't want to just drive straight there. I want to find some fun things along the way. If you've been a part of this channel for a while, you know that I recently just took a road trip from New Jersey to Las Vegas to move myself out here. And I stopped at a lot of cool places along the way. So why not make this four hour trip more like a six hour trip, more like a seven hour trip? Who knows? I'm going to take the whole day. I'm gonna find some cool places to stop it along the way. I'm gonna make a day of it and I'm gonna end that day in LA seeing August D in concert and it's gonna be incredible. I'm so excited. I also should note that this was an impromptu decision. <laughs> literally last night. I've literally been toying with this decision since the tickets went on sale and yesterday I was just like, I can't not go. I can't not go. I can't miss this. It is Suga's first solo tour. It may be his last one as August D because he's released three albums under this name and he he says he may be retiring that persona of August D after this. So who knows if he'll ever tour as August D ever again. I know he won't stop making music, but like, I wanna see this tour. I don't wanna miss it. I'm so excited, but I have a few things to do around here before I leave. I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna eat some breakfast. I have a few little errands to run and then we're gonna hit the road. Catch up with you in a bit.
넘어진 바빠 개설레임 바꾸는 사람들 시간만 지나가 자신감 가지고 해와 그냥 천천히 들어가야 해 어쩔 때에는 무작정 들이밀기만 하지만 그런 거랑 차이가 있어 baby oh 
God, worth every second, worth every penny. It was incredible. All right, you'll either see me in a hotel room tomorrow morning or my bed tomorrow morning. And uh, we'll finish up this vlog. And I'll tell you uh, what's been going on in my head, what I've been thinking lately. And yeah, see you soon. Hello. It's actually been a few days since I got back from the concert. Afterwards, I was just so exhausted and I had just a few days of relaxing, getting my brain back in order. I also went hiking, which was super fun. Some of my friends were in town. But now that it's been a few days, I've had some time to decompress. I wanted to talk about what I keep teasing in this video, which is some sort of existential conversation about how I've been feeling about my life recently and how I've been feeling this way for a while, but this BTS documentary sort of inspired me and encouraged me to have some new mantras in my life. So let me explain. In the documentary, it's just a solo documentary for Suga, who's a member of BTS, who also goes by the name August D, who is who I just saw in concert. So it's his documentary, his journey, making this new album and he talks a lot about the motivation behind the songs that he was writing. Right at the top of the documentary, he talks about turning 30 this year and how in his 20s, he was very clearly able to see what he wanted, what his dreams were. And yeah, it was like he had a clear picture of what his 20s looked like. But whenever thinking about his 30s, even through like the major success of BTS in his 20s, whenever he looked into his 30s, he just saw darkness, blank, nothing. And that's sort of what got my wheels turning a little bit. And I was able to think about how I was feeling about my 30s and almost rewire my brain in a way that's making me appreciate my 30s in a different way. Because everything he spoke about his 30s, I sort of feel the same way. I first of all, felt that like when I turned 30, like that was it, like my life was over. If I hadn't accomplished the things that I wanted by the time I turned 30, then there was no possibility of me ever reaching those goals. I really felt like everyone always says, your 20s are the best years of your life. That's when you figure everything out. That's when you figure out what you want to do and who you are. And so leading up to my 30s, I had this dread of feeling like I needed to accomplish everything. And I definitely haven't accomplished everything I want to accomplish now that I'm 30. And I find myself often like apologizing for my age or pretending that I'm younger than I am. When in actuality, the experience that I've had in the six months of being 30 is nothing like what I anticipated it would be or nothing that I feared it would be. The past six months have been kind of some of the best months of my entire life. And though I am still sort of in this boat that like, like Suga is in as well and like what he talked about in the documentary of not really like seeing what my 30s are gonna be when I had like a clear idea of what I wanted my 20s to be. I'm kind of okay with that. I'm obviously still dreaming and I still have goals that I want to achieve in this next decade of my life. I'm okay with the blackness. I'm okay with the darkness, the unknown, the uncertainty. And I really just wanna focus so much more on the day to day of the moment. You know, I don't wanna be looking at the past and regretting anything. I wanna look at the past and see how it's shaped my present. And I want to peer into the future and have ideas and small expectations, but I'm not anymore really trying to outline strongly what I feel like my 30s should look like. Because truthfully, I had this idea of what I wanted my 20s to be and they didn't turn out to be that. They were something totally different. But I wouldn't change anything because as I said, I look into my past and I can see how it's shaped my present. I was given this piece of advice once when I was in acting school where someone said, when all your dreams start coming true, you're gonna look back and you're gonna see something that happened five years ago that maybe felt really mundane at the moment and see how that small moment is now like a major reason why your dreams are coming true now. A strong example of that, I wanna tell the story of how I got involved in Terrifier 2 from the beginning, from the very first moment that then shaped the first major, major step in my career. My friend Marissa Bertani, who I have my film company Late Bloomer Pictures with, was in a short film. That short film was showing in a film festival in New Jersey and she went to this film festival. At said film festival, she was approached by a group of people who told her that they were making a spoof trailer to Halloween, whatever Halloween movie was coming out at the time. And 
that she looked like one of the actresses in the film and they asked if she wanted to be in said spoof trailer. She said yes, she films this trailer. Fast forward, we are trying to get Roommates, our first little web series produced. We didn't release that under Late Bloomer Pictures, but it was the first thing that Marissa and I worked on together. And while we're in pre-production for it, kind of figuring out what roles we need to fill, she thinks back on these people that she filmed the spoof trailer with. And she says we should hire them to film and produce Roommates. Those people are fuzz on the lens, who you might know from Terrifier. During the filming of Roommates, they were talking about Terrifier 2 a lot because they were in pre-production for that. They were getting ready to do casting. And so that was the first that like I'd ever heard of Terrifier. When I saw the casting call go up, I auditioned for it. And because at this point, Fuzz knew me and they knew Marissa, we got called in. She read for Sienna. I read for Brooke and Allie. Neither one of us booked those roles, but then later on, because they knew that I sang, they called me back in for the Clown Cafe host. I booked that. When production was shut down for a bit, Damien was reworking the end. Now that he actually knew me, he brought me back in to play the nurse at the end and the rest is history. But it's so funny like tracing that back and realizing that Marissa going to that film festival was like the first step in this journey. And it's really cool to look back on that. And I hate to use the word regret because I don't have regrets. I think if you're happy where you are in your life, you shouldn't regret anything that's happened to you because any change could change your present. But seeing that, you know, timeline in a way does make me sort of regret worrying about the future so much because the future worked out. The future worked itself out. And it's just the beginning of my journey. And rather than worrying about the future moving forward, I just feel like I need to sit back, appreciate the present, and just have a belief within myself that I know the future will work out. Whether I worry about it, stress about it, it's going to figure itself out because it always does. And in this new mindset of mine of living in the present, I want to incorporate some of my past motivations into my present and into my future. What I mean by that is is prior to the trying times of 2020, I was actually taking one long backpack trip a year. I went to Thailand, I went to Colombia, I went to Peru, completely by myself, just with a backpack on my back, with only my first night in a hostel booked, and the rest of my trip, whether it be a month or six weeks, depending on the trip, the rest of it was open-ended. I literally went to countries by myself, and though I met people, I did those trips by myself, totally alone. And as I was like watching this documentary, and I was like, like thinking about going to this concert and knowing that like I didn't have any close friends that were a fan of this music and I really wouldn't have anybody to ask to go with me, especially because the tickets were so expensive. It was really deterring me from wanting to buy tickets, but after I saw this documentary, I just like knew I had to be there. This is one of my favorite artists of all time. This is his first solo tour. He said he may be retiring the Persona August D after this tour, so who knows if he'll ever tour this way again. Who knows if he'll ever tour so solo again, even if he uses a different persona, maybe he's not gonna like touring solo. You just really never know. Anything could happen that could make this tour my first and last opportunity to see one of my favorite artists live in concert by himself. And I was thinking about these solo trips that I take and I'm like, why don't I incorporate that into my actual everyday life? Like why can I for a month at a time go to a foreign country and experience it completely by myself? But in my day-to-day -day life, I'm not comfortable doing things alone. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, I live right by Red Rocks Canyon. And yesterday was the first time I ever went there since I've moved because I had friends in town who wanted to go. But it's literally a 30 minute drive for me. I could go there whenever I wanted by myself. And I should be doing that, you know? We shouldn't rely on other people for us to have experiences in our lives. Which is why I woke up that day and I said to myself, I have to go to this concert. I don't care if I'm going alone. I don't care if I don't speak to another person. Like this is important to me. This is gonna be something I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life and whether or not someone can come with me shouldn't determine whether or not I get to experience it. And now reflecting on it three or four days later, I really will never forget that experience. It was incredible. It was everything I wanted it to me. I'm like emotional thinking about it. Oh my gosh. I like, I cried a bunch too. It was such a unique concert. The set list was structured in a way unlike any concert I've ever been to before. It broke a lot of rules, I think, of concert structure in a way that was like inventive and unique and interesting and unforgettable. And I'm just feeling so lucky and so fulfilled and hungry and ready for whatever my future is gonna have in store for me. But I don't want to forget about the present moments and forget about the experiences that I could have right now. And it's so interesting that like a love of this K-pop 
pop idol, this rapper is bringing all of this up in me. And because of that, and because of him having this sort of like existential crisis of turning 30 and not being able to see his future, because I had been feeling the same way, seeing him experience that has helped me rewire it a little in my brain and realize that my 30s aren't something to be afraid of or ashamed of. They are something to be excited about. And I am excited. I don't feel bound by my age anymore the way I did when I was in my teens and my 20s. And I'm done apologizing for my age. I'm 30. I've had the best six months of my life being 30. And I can't wait for what comes next. Really just liberating having that feeling. Not feeling like I'm bound by time, by anyone else's expectation of me, by my age. I'm really just bound by my own talent, my own drive, my own expectations for myself. And I feel limitless. And I'm glad I challenged myself to go to this concert. I'm glad I made a little road trip out of it and I got to see some cool things along the way. I feel like it really gave me time to just be with myself and to think. And I am gonna make that a challenge for myself to continue this mindset and to continue this curiosity and to bring in a lot of the elements of my personality that I find when I'm on my solo trips and integrate that into my everyday life. And I just hope that if you're feeling a certain way about the future, if you have some dread, you have regrets, just like sit with yourself and know that you're on the right track. You're where you're supposed to be. The future is the future and it'll sort itself out. All you can really do is focus on the present and live every life as fully as possible and show yourself love and show yourself grace and know that we're all doing the best we can. And also know that bad days still happen, but I have been working on refocusing my mindset and learning how to focus on the positives of each day rather than harping on the negatives. I, in my journal every single night, I'll write three three good things that happened that day, whether it's like I ate a good meal, I saw a cute dog, and I think it has changed my mindset. It's weird because prior to this year, I have always really said that majority of my life is bad. <laughs> majority of my life, I'm upset. Majority of my life, I'm depressed, unhappy, and it's just peppered in with a few good days here and there. I don't really feel that way anymore. I kind of feel the opposite. That majority of my life is happy and hopeful and positive with a few bad days peppered in and I just I I really think that's the power of the mind and we are way more capable than we give ourselves credit for our minds are way more powerful than we could imagine and this year at age 30 and into the rest of my 30s I'm going to continue to access that power in my mind and let that shape my entire life into something positive. And yeah, that's all I have to say. I had a really great week. I'm glad I have this little video diary to look back on it. I'm glad I got the chance to sit down and express my feelings about it. And I hope it got you thinking as well. And in the words of August D off of his title track on his new album D-Day, future is going to be okay. Look in the mirror and I see no pain. All right, I'll see y'all next week. We're going to get back into the home decorating series. It was nice to have a little break, but I'm excited to get back into it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.